I'm having this mini discussion within a discussion about Gentile Christians who embrace the Hebraic lifestyle are fond of saying, well, we're not Gentile anymore. <laughs> and I'm saying, like, like, on what grounds are you not Gentile anymore if you're born Gentile and you you come from the surrounding nations other than Israel? On what grounds are you no longer Gentile? And they say, well, because Paul says, I'm speaking to you former Gentiles if you understand blah, blah, blah. And they pull their quote from Ephesians chapter 2, where Paul uses the phrase former Gentiles. And yet, I don't think that's the context of the way Paul's using the Greek word ethnos. That's why I'm trying to bring this point up, is he's trying to get the Gentiles who were formerly pagans to understand their change in status in God's economy from pagan to saint to hagiasmos, I believe is the Greek word I'm looking for, for saint, or for the holy ones. Um, uh, the, the Hebrew word is something akin to um, where we get the word for Chabad. Uh, today, the the uh, I'll have to look it up here off the top of my head. I can't remember, but um, uh, the holy ones are those who have been sanctified by God because they've been set apart by the very Spirit of God. So we we shouldn't call ourselves pagans anymore. All right. Um, I asked the question rhetorically: Did we come to this revelation on our own? Right, that the Holy Spirit is truly God's Spirit, that Jesus is truly Lord, that God is the one and only God that we should serve, and that we need Jesus if we are to um, escape the fire, the hells of uh, the fires of hell. Did we come to the revelation of our own? No, right? Emphatic, no, really, but no. Regeneration, I say, is accomplished solely by the the divine fiat. Of God, of course, I'm speaking to the choir. Man is incapable of calling God Abba, right? Paul says, um, the Spirit of God helps us cry, uh, Abba, Father, Daddy, God. Man is incapable of calling God Abba without becoming born again first, right? And so you have to um, recall uh, Paul's um, quote from all of Romans chapter 8, but specifically verses 14 through 17, where he talks about uh, um, uh, calling on God. Uh, the, uh, God as our father, Abba, father, uh, daddy, God, uh, Abba is kind of a term of endearment. Your pastor will tell you it's a Hebrew way of saying not just father, but daddy, right? Uh, like a little child would call his father. He wouldn't normally call him father. Uh, at least in, in American culture, we don't call our, the young children don't call their father's father. Not all the time. Daddy is quite uh, common, especially if you're a, a you know like an elementary aged uh, child or a kindergarten aged uh, child. I go on to um, conclude this paragraph. The second clause of verse three, as I'm kind of exegeting the passage above, the second clause of verse three of our Corinthian passage. And remember, I've got two passages that we're working with: the Ephesians passage and the Corinthian passage that talks about uh, no one can call Jesus Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. The second clause of verse 3 of our Corinthian passage confirms this reality of the idea that salvation experience is exclusive to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit at the salvation level. The Holy Spirit can come upon a person, in my understanding, and you don't have to be saved. The Holy Spirit definitely comes upon you when you are saved, and He indwells you when you're saved. And therefore, you can be both indwelt by the Holy Spirit for salvation purposes, and you can subsequently receive additional um, empowerings uh, later on, subsequent to the salvation experience. Uh, some charismatics call this a second uh, infilling or uh, something to that effect. Um, but either way, I think it describes where we uh, receive um, uh, latter um, kind of empowerments or recharging marching orders uh, to receive by God. Um, and so these happen sometimes after we've been saved with that initial indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So it's a subsequent, some some Christians do not believe in a subsequent indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not trying to say that there is a second indwelling. I'm trying to say that there's a second empowerment. I don't believe that there is a subsequent indwelling. Um, I believe there's an initial, so I'm trying to make this plain so you don't misunderstand me. 